So today we're doing another beginners video. I haven't done a beginners video in a long time actually. We're doing a lot of experiments. Some, um, yeah, what have I been doing actually? Anyway, I just came home last night from a little trip to Barcelona. It was absolutely amazing. Um, but some of you might remember that every time I went for a trip this year, I came home to a lot of algae issues and stuff. But the lights just turned on and I'm happy to say that everything is looking quite good. So I was only gone for three days. So no really big issues, only small things. For example, the big shallow, we have a lot of water evaporation. So we need to add some fresh water. Seems like the fish are hungry as well, so we're going to give them some nice food. I'm sure the plants are hungry as well, so let's give them some nice liquid fertilizers. So we're going to do all that, and in the meantime, we'll talk about some of the, uh, the tips that I have for beginners. Okay, let's start with number 10. This one is very, very important. And the only reason I didn't put it higher on the list is because it's very general, it's very broad. It's one word, consistency. I think consistency really is the success to any planted tank, any aquascape. And, but yeah, it's very broad. Like you can be consistent with a lot of things. I would say the most important thing to be consistent with is just your lights and your CO2. And that can be easily be automated. Put your lights on a timer, make sure they come on every day at the same time and they switch off at the same time. So you have a consistent photo period. Same, going, so same thing goes for the CO2. So have your CO2 on a timer, let it start an hour or maybe two hours before your lights come on and let it switch off an hour before your lights switch off. So then you already have two things that are very important on a very consistent basis. So we're already off to a great start. And then next you can still think about your liquid fertilizers, put a reminder for yourself every morning, drop in a little bit of liquid fertilizers. Maintenance, that, yeah, that is a bit different for everybody. I mean, I have a lot of time free on, on a Saturday, so I like to do my maintenance every Saturday. Some people might not have that luxury and they have to do it in the evening or something like that. But just find out what is the best way for you to be consistent. So that is tip number 10. Now the next one you're probably not gonna like. Tip number nine for beginners is to start simple and take it one step at a time. This is probably not what you wanna hear, but way too often I see people who are new to aquascaping, they, got, they get hooked because they've seen these beautiful images on Instagram, on social media, whatever, and they wanna start doing that immediately. Like they wanna recreate, rec recreate what they've seen online. But the person who have made that beautiful aquascape, he's probably been in the hobby for a bit longer, He's probably already made his fair share of mistakes and yeah, he's just at a different level than you are. So I would really recommend to take a step back, start simple and just take it one step at a time. So first start focusing on trying to grow healthy plants. Once you've managed to achieve that, then you can start working on your trimming skills. And if you got that under control, you can start working on your algae prevention skills, for example. Yeah, I really think you're going to have a lot more success if you start simple. Learn as you go, keep developing yourself, keep improving your layouts, your aquascapes, and then just yeah, increase your level. Instead of trying to get this really high level from the very beginning, you're probably gonna fail, you're probably gonna get disappointed, and you're probably gonna quit. And that's the last thing you want to happen. Okay, number eight. This one is very important and is very often overlooked. Tip number eight for beginners is be very careful when selecting your hardscape. I mean, with aquascaping these days, a lot of new products have been introduced, a lot of new rocks, a lot of new types of wood, and it's all very beautiful. But just because it's safe to use for your aquarium doesn't mean it's gonna have any effect on your water. Classic example is the cereal rocks that release a lot of calcium. Or we have uh, different types of wood that release a lot of tannins. And if you buy this hardscape and you're not aware of the effects, then that's gonna cause some issues, especially if you're a beginner. I mean, again, coming back to the cereal rocks, they release a lot of calcium into the water, raising your water hardness. And that means you need to inject more CO2 into the water. But if you're not aware of this, then there's a good chance that you're gonna have some, def some 
some major black brush algae issues. There's also this really beautiful type of wood on the market right now. I believe it's called millennial wood. Really beautiful, lots of detail. But this stuff, uh, it just releases a lot of yeah, tannins or like slime and fungus and it just smells horrible. And a lot of people have used this wood and already killed their livestock with it. So yeah, just be careful when you're selecting your hardscape. That's tip number eight. Okay, for tip number seven, I'm using this aquarium as an example. So tip number seven is to secure your hardscape. So this is a very detailed layout, lots of pieces of wood, lots of rocks, and every single thing that you see here is secured. So everything is glued together with super glue. And this just makes sure that the whole structure stays intact, even when you're doing maintenance, even when you're trimming the plants and you're accidentally touching a piece of wood. Like if, I, if nothing would have been secured here, this layout would have been destroyed with the first maintenance session. So what I do is very simple. I take a piece of kitchen paper, I crumple it together, and I wedge that in between the two points that I want to connect. Then I add a few drops of liquid super glue onto the kitchen paper, so the paper is soaked with, with glue. And then within seconds, this becomes rock solid and binds those two pieces together. So it's a very cheap, very simple and effective method to of securing your hardscape. Okay, I think we're at six now. Tip number six for beginners is to use some fast growing plants. So a lot of the beginner guides will say like choose plants like Java fern, um, Anubias, Crypts, Bucephalandras. And that's great. I mean, that's, that's a really good suggestion. I mean, they are very easy plants and any beginner can grow them for sure. But also add some fast growing plants because these fast growing plants, they just really soak up excess nutrients. They're great against algae and they just really help to establish your aquarium quicker in my opinion so even if you don't like these fast growing plants you want to keep it low maintenance you don't want to be trimming every every two weeks then just use them temporarily so use them in the first few weeks of your aquarium and after your aquarium is established you can remove these fast growing plants but especially in the beginning they're just very helpful against algae and to just to stabilize your aquarium so yeah that's tip number six okay we're almost halfway um tip number 10 was Consistency. Consistency is key. I think another key to a successful aquascape, successful plant tank is to enjoy maintenance. So tip number five is make your maintenance easier. If you really want to enjoy maintenance, it has to be easy, right? I mean, if you every week like carrying heavy buckets full of water because you don't have a system, then you're not going to be enjoying maintenance for very long. So if you make your maintenance easier, you're going to be enjoying it. You're going to be doing it more often or at least on a consistent basis. So yeah, to make some tips to make your maintenance easier is to just have your tools all in one place, keep your tools organized, have a system for water changes. So I have a long garden hose that, that drains the tank and the water drains directly to the toilet. When I have to refill it, I put a submersible pump in my kitchen sink, attach the same hose and I can directly fill it back up at the right temperature. So I yeah, have a system for your water changes also have some buckets on hand i like to use buckets for dumping my plant trimmings in for soaking my inlet and outlet in some bleach for example or to clean my filter sponges in some tank water you can never have enough buckets really with this hobby and put some music on like say congratulations i always like to have some music in the background when i'm doing maintenance so i actually really enjoy maintenance and that makes me do it more often so that's tip number five Okay, tip number four is to see your aquarium light as your gas pedal. So if you're in a car and you push the gas pedal, you're gonna go faster. If you put more light in your aquarium, your plants will grow faster. But if you go faster, you need more fuel as well. So same in the aquarium, if you put more light, you need more nutrients as well. So you need more, more fertilizers and you need more CO2. So to give an example, over here we have the Big Shallow. This is my biggest aquarium, 180 liters and it has a very, very strong light. So to balance that, we also need to inject a lot of CO2. I'm injecting about five or six bubbles per second, and I'm dosing liquid fertilizer every single day, like six milliliters of macro and six milliliters of micronutrients every single day. Then to contrast, over here we have the um, 10 liter no filter cube and the no filter vase. So these two both have 
strong light as well actually but we're using a lot of floating plants and because we're using the floating plants we get very little light inside the aquarium itself and because of that we don't need co2 injection and we don't need as much liquid fertilizers i think i'm dosing one drop of nutrients in here every week or so just a drop now if i would remove the floating plants here then the balance would be gone then we would, we would need to start injecting co2 and adding more nutrients or we will get some algae issues so that kind of, kind of explains how the light is your yeah, your gas pedal and more gas means also more CO2 and more nutrients. Okay, and then we're arriving at the top three of my beginner's tips. So on number three, I have don't freak out when you start seeing algae. And this is what I see happen all the time. Like new people, new to the hobby, they set up their first tank it all looks great but then after two three weeks they start seeing some first signs of algae they'll get some diatoms algae some i guess some green dust algae they'll get some green spot algae maybe even some filamentous algae and they then then they like start freaking out they go to the nearest store buy some chemical that kills algae or they start reducing their light intensity which is even worse i think if you're serious about this hobby you need to educate yourself on algae i think that's just part of the game so I have a lot of videos on algae on this channel, so make sure you check them out. And if you just educate yourself a little bit, you'll find out that in a new setup, it's completely normal to get some algae. Like even myself, whenever I set up a new tank, I know exactly that on week three, I'll start seeing diatoms. On week four, I'll probably get some green dust algae and green spot algae as well. So by then it's just time to start adding my, my algae eaters, my all sinkless and my amano shrimp, and they'll take care of it. By week six, by week seven, the algae, the, the algae will be completely gone and the tank will be spotless. But if I'm going to start freaking out, I'm going to start reducing the light intensity. My plants will not grow as fast, which we actually need them to grow fast to combat the algae. So yeah, just don't freak out. Educate yourself a little bit on algae. I mean, you don't have to know everything, just the, the, just the basics. I mean, if you are aware that diatoms, if diatoms is a clear sign of a new tank setup, a green dust algae just means you have a little bit too much nutrients. Green spot algae means you have a bit too much phosphate. Filamentous algae means you have maybe too little CO2 or too much light. And black wash algae means you have some fluctuating CO2 levels. If you already know those things, then you're already going to be set up for success. And you, you will know exactly what to do when you see those algae appear. Okay, two left. So my second best beginner's tip is plan before you buy. This is something I see happen way too often as well. Which is not really necessarily a bad thing, of course, but... I think when you plan it properly before you start, like it's just gonna, you're gonna just get much better results. Like way too often I see people who just start, like they have no clue what to do, but they just buy a tank and they buy some substrate, they buy some plants and they just get started. And nine out of 10 times, it just doesn't really end up very well. They get disappointed and then they quit, which is just a real shame, you know? And if you just make a plan beforehand, okay, like um, I wanna buy a 60 liter tank. Okay, that's not too expensive. Well, maybe we can upgrade to a 90 centimeters tank. Okay, but then we need more soils. Okay, it's actually more expensive. So, okay, now let's stick with the 60 centimeters tank. And then you can budget your CO2 system. You can budget how much you can spend on plants. Uh, if you can buy an, an external filter or stick with an internal filter. And if you have this plan in mind and you know kind of uh, what plants you want to buy, what are their requirements, you're just going to have a much better success. And of course, as a beginner, it can be very hard to figure out exactly what you need. So in the description of this video, I will leave a list of things that you might need to buy that are like mandatory and things that are optional, just like a shopping list. So you know, kind of know what you need to buy to get started. So I'll leave that in the description, check that out. And what I really like is when people come to me, say, Mark, I want to get started. This is my budget. What do I buy? And then I, I like making these lists for them. Like, okay, you need this tank, you need this CO2 system and this filtration. And then you are within the budget. Then you have a nice complete setup. So there's my second best tip, guys. Just make a good plan before you buy something. Okay, time for the last one. My best tip for beginners is find a mentor. Now, maybe this is not the answer you expected. So let me explain. What I mean by find a mentor is that you find somebody who has results that you like, who has a style of planted tank that you like, you talk to the person, you find out how they're doing it, what their methods are, what kind of products they use, and you copy that, or you use the same methods. 
Now the reason why I'm suggesting this is because what I see happen all the time is beginners who want to get started with the aquarium hobby, the aquascaping hobby. They want to get started and they're asking for advice, of course. Like it's normal to ask for advice, we all do that. But then they get a bunch of answers that are all different because everybody's using different methods, everybody's using different products. And beginners are just getting confused by all these different answers. And in, in Holland we say, ik zie door de bomen het bos niet meer. That basically just means that with all these answers, like you're so confused, you don't even know what's right anymore. And that can be really difficult for beginners. I think that finding a mentor can help you save a lot of time and frustration because every new beginner needs to first figure out what doesn't work before they can figure out what does work. I mean, I had to go through that path as well. I first had to figure out what didn't work for me. And right now I know exactly what works for me. But this is a time consuming process and it can be very frustrating as well. So if you find a mentor and you figure out what works for them and then you try that yourself, I think that can save you a lot of time and a lot of headache as well. And I mean, if you don't want to, you, you don't even have to talk to your mentor because these days, if you go through social media, you'll find so many people who are just documenting their journey, um, explaining exactly what kind of products they're using, explaining exactly how they're doing maintenance, how they're fertilizing their tank, uh, what kind of products they're using. So it's very simple to copy somebody else's methods these days. So that was my best tip and that was all 10 of them. Um, maybe a bit different than what you see on other aquarium channels. So if you're a beginner and you found this helpful, let me know in the comments. Smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Take care. Don't forget to check out the light screens from Flux Aqua. They're custom made, so it doesn't matter which size aquarium you have. The Chroma RGB is really nice if you want to play around with different colors and the competition screen is great if you prefer that bright white infinity look. Click the first link in the description and get 15% discount on your purchase or use my code MJFAMILY on the checkout page.